Greetings, Cannabis Warriors, and welcome to the Cannabis Spotlight. Today, we're going to talk about poker, how cannabis can be beneficial to poker. Today, we have a poker player, Omaha Hydro, <laughs> and uh, we're going to... Omaha Hydro is a poker player, and... Uh, going to ask you a few questions first of all omaha say hi to everybody hello everybody i'm going to feature you on the screen now omaha cool so how did you come up with your uh handle your youtube handle oh my uh my favorite poker game is omaha high low so i figured uh i'd say omaha hydro it just sounded kind of funny and creative. So anybody that plays Omaha High Low will know exactly what I'm talking about, that I'm a poker player that smokes weed. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. So uh, how, long, how long have you been playing poker? Oh, shit. Professionally, probably 10 years plus. Okay. So you're a professional poker player. Yeah. Okay. And uh, – What's your your favorite game is Omaha? Favorite game is Omaha High Low. That's a, it's a split pot game, meaning the best uh, low hand gets half the pot, and the best high hand gets half the pot. I see. I see. Yeah. So it kind of raises your odds to win. Uh, just players are worse. Uh, variance is lower than Hold'em because now Hold'em's everywhere on TV and. ESPN and everyone thinks they can play, which everyone actually can play all of them. And that's the two card game that everyone sees on TV. So I'm going towards more of the mixed game style, which is high low split games like, uh, you know, Omaha high low or stud high low or anything like that where people aren't very experienced, you know. I see. So it gives you a better chance. The edge. The edge is bigger is, is what it is. Hold them edge. I still have an edge, I feel like, with most people. But the Omaha high-low edge is just, like, say, 30% instead of a smaller edge and hold them, which is two cards, say, 3%. You know? Yeah. Okay, so how does cannabis, uh, how does smoking cannabis assist you and help you with uh, playing cards like that? Oh, it helps me tremendously. It, uh, uh, poker players, they call it tilt when, say, you have a 95% hand chance that you're going to win, say, on the turn card. And then on the last card, that 5% chance you lose, you just get pissed. I mean, you're a human being. It happens, you know. So if you're smoking cannabis, it, you just kind of – it's easier to shake off. You know what I mean? That's, that's my main reason why I smoke while I'm playing is for that reason because I have a tendency to go on tilt. And that, and that means basically that after I lose that hand, I'm going to be so pissed off, I'm going to be going fucking nuts, you know, raising, re-raising, and, and dusting off all my money. So smoking cannabis helps me stay in line, stay in balance. Um, I feel like I can wear my shades, you know what I mean, and uh, get a read off people, and they don't know I'm looking at them, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And plus, they can't tell I'm stoned because they can't see my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know I mean? So, <clears throat> so you've played obviously without cannabis. Yeah. And how does that go for you? Well, shit! I just got back from the World Series of Poker, and uh, I was scared to bring weed on the plane. I mean, I almost honestly just took it, strapped it on my balls, but uh, fuck that! You know, I didn't want to get in trouble, so. I went down there without weed, and I mean, there's no withdrawals off weed, really, you know. But I felt like my game wasn't there. It, you know, I was still playing good, but not as good as I could have been on cannabis. You know what I mean? Wow, so it, it's uh, for you. Cannabis actually increases your winnings. It's almost an asset to making money. Yeah, most definitely. Wow. Uh, yes, sir. Huh. Yeah. It's, now, I'm just wondering if anybody in the chat might have some questions for our professional poker player here, Omaha Hydro. 
Uh, I'm going to let the chat consider that. Uh, I can't. So, <laughs> are you going to, uh, do you buy your cannabis? Do you grow your cannabis? What, do you uh, have like, a medical condition or anything like that? Actually, tomorrow I'm going in for uh, to get my card at 3 p.m. Oh. Yeah. So I plan to start growing for myself. But, yeah, lately I've been spending, you know, buying it at dispensaries and shit for ridiculous prices. So I can get a card for what? It's like 350 Start growing uh, for myself. So I'll save me some money there. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, I you know, uh, cannabis, I think, is legal in Nevada now as well. No, it's not it's not legal. They're starting the process, but you have to have a card. I see. Yeah, so I couldn't get shit out there. I, I was trying to. Hmm. Well, how did you do? How did you do in the Do you go down there by yourself or do you go down there with uh, like a no, team of players or Yeah, I went down there with uh, two guys. One's very no, well known. Uh, his name's David Pham. Um, David the Dragon? David the Dragon, yeah. Really? He actually just won his uh, third bracelet in the 1500 event. I think it was event 17. I think I got it on my phone here, but it's pretty cool to be a part of that. But I didn't do shit. I played like nine tournaments, lost like 10K. And I don't want to blame it on the cannabis or anything like that, but I really believe if, if I what did have cannabis, I would have done better. But let me see if I can pull up this photo here. It's pretty cool because uh, the dragon's like a legend down there. And I was uh, fortunate enough to be a part of the team, you know. That's, so, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, he won, he won like uh, the 1500 event, um, like 391 grand. Yeah. Four, he won $400,000, the guy on your team. Yeah, 400K. So here he is. Here, I don't know if you can see. Oh, shit. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, says basically says Dave the Dragon it's him right there in the middle I'm in the back and there's Jimmy is the other guy in the black right there and I'm, I'm in the back I don't know if you can what, see what if you turn your phone sideways will the picture be bigger uh let's see no no but anyway it says it basically says Dave the Dragon Captures his third bracelet in event number 12, 1,500 no limit hold'em. And, uh, yeah, it was just cool to be a part of that. And uh, I feel like, I mean, I haven't been able to go to Vegas for personal reasons, but I feel like if I continue to go down there, I'm going to eventually win one. When was uh, – have you, have you won any tournaments that you can tell us about? Yeah, oh, yeah, around here, around the northwest, yeah. But I mainly – I'm a cash player, you know, because tournaments so, – there's so much more luck involved in tournaments because you only get one life. So a tournament, for all you that don't know, poker, is say the buy-in is 500. Everyone buys in 500. They get X amount of chips, say 10,000, and say uh, 300 people enter. So that's the prize pool, 500 times 300. And then you play all the way down to the final table – and the first player makes the most money. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and like 15% of the field get paid out. So if it was 300 players, say like uh, 40th would get like, if it was a $500 buy-in, they would get like 800 back, you know? And then as you move up, you get, the pays go up. So first place would probably be around 25K in a tournament like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've had, a, I've had a couple hits like that, five-figure hits like that in those kind of tournaments. So what's the difference, I mean, in the way you play a tournament versus the way you play a cash game? Oh, tournaments are uh, totally different. You play it for – it's all about survival because you only have one life. So, I mean, even just going down there with David the Dragon fan who has $10 million in tournament earnings, I've learned so much from just talking with them. And it's basically like you're just navigating and you're trying to avoid landmines is what he says. It's so hard to talk. He talks, he's bitten to me. So he's like, you know, Jack, he talked like this, you know, <laughs> <laughs> basically, you know, 
especially at the World Series where there's 3,000 plus entrants and big money involved. Um, super hard to win. It took him 11 years to win his third bracelet. That's how hard it is. Wow. And that's how much luck is involved in tournaments. Cash is a different story. You play a cash game, the blinds, I mean, everybody understands poker, I'm assuming. The blinds are, say, 510. It would be a minimum buy-in of real cash, $500, and you get real chips at $500. The blinds stay the same. If you lose that $500, you can buy in $1,000 or $2,000 if you want. Just depends on what you want to do, you know. So I prefer cash games because there's a lot of – you can play a lot more. You can take more risks. You can bluff more, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Whereas in a tournament, you're going to play more cautious because you only have one life. And once all your chips are gone, you cannot rebuy in most tournaments. I see. Yeah. So it's a different style of play. So yeah. I, guess, I guess then what you're, if I'm getting it correctly, <sighs> In a cash game, you can be more aggressive and than you can in a, a tournament. I would say uh, there's multiple styles you can play of poker. I, I can play all styles from loose aggressive to tight aggressive to, you know, some people that I know only have one style. It's good to have all styles and play according to the table around you. And that's what cannabis is really good for, too, is you're basically awareness. Like I can sit down at a table and basically within the first two rounds or two orbits, I can make, categorize each player. Of, and you can even tell, especially on cannabis, if a businessman is there with a drink in his hand and his tie is halfway loosened, that he's there to fucking gamble. You know what I mean? And his chips are sloppy. <laughs> I wouldn't try and bluff that motherfucker. You know what I mean? But as a guy that's like clean cut, uh, Chips are all lined up like a little knit, we call them. Knit's a tight ass, like just won't put any money in with, without the best hand. Then I'd try and bluff the shit out of that guy. You know what I mean? I see. And then cannabis makes you aware, more aware, I would say, of all these things. Hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the chat, <clears throat> he says... Uh, Vito Music 23 is asking, do you, do you find many fish to play against? Yeah, I mean, you got, I'm from Portland, so Portland, Oregon, there's tons of underground games, but everybody knows I play for a living, but they know I give action. So I'll be invited to these private games that are kind of underground, but they're all legit because no one's raking like a casino would rake. You understand? So you go to the casino and play, they're raking five dollars a fucking hand. We're at a private game, it's tips. So after each pot you win, you tip whatever you want. So it makes it legal. You can have we could have a legal game at my place here or whatever, you know what I mean? So yeah, in these private games, tons of fish. Businessmen, they got money, not very many professionals. And I'm just fortunate enough to know some of these guys that basically want me in there to tip them better because i'll win more you know what i mean okay now let me ask you this i mean how do you uh how do you I, get into those games like i just said it's just all about networking and uh i've been around a long time and you tip if you tip well and treat others well they treat you well back so that's basically what it is I see. and then there's clubs here too like there's clubs where you can go and play pay a door fee and it's the same thing no rake you tip shit like that Vito also is asking um do you team up with other guys and you kind of mentioned that but could you sp explain more about the team that just got back from the world series that you were a part of yeah uh we don't that's a team like of us from oregon actually david the dragon he's from la but we all went and stayed together. We're not necessarily a team out here playing colluding or cheating or anything like that. You know what I mean? But we will swap percentages of each other because we're on the same team. Like, say, we all enter a tournament for 1,500, and there's 3,000 players. Us three have a pretty good chance of making the, t of the final table. And if one of us makes the final table and cashes, say, for 70,000, then that each of the team members will get a certain percent, whatever was agreed. You know what I mean? I see. Mm -hmm. 
so it's almost like uh, an insurance policy. Yeah, it's just kind of fun to, like, if one of one of us is out early, um, we'll go play cash games, and they'll still be in. And then when David made the final table, I stopped everything I was doing. I went down there, and there's all these cameras and shit. It was crazy. It was just amazing to be a part of it. And he won his third bracelet, and they had a big ceremony about it. And it was just, it was awesome. Wow. Yeah. So, um, have you ever? Uh, I think when we were talking privately, you mentioned that you won an LA tournament. No, I never won outright an LA tournament. But I'm, I'm mostly a cash player. I take shots at tournaments because tournaments are so hard to win. But didn't you? You mentioned something about cashing in a tournament down in LA. Oh yeah, I, I've cashed in uh, a couple down there. Uh, at the Commerce Casino, but nothing huge, you know, maybe like 3K. Um, my biggest, I think, cash at uh, was like 22000 I got second in the Pendleton main event in Pendleton, Oregon. It was a $500 buy, and I think there was like 500-something players. I got second for like 22000 That was a pretty good day. Okay, so then that was a tournament, right? Yeah. Cash games, you know. You like to play cash, it sounds like. Yeah, most definitely. I'm thinking maybe in these private cash games, you can actually smoke cannabis at the table. Yeah, fuck yeah, you can. Sit there and pass a blunt around. <laughs> I get it. So, cannabis is probably pretty popular in the poker community. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Fucking in. <laughs> so, what are you smoking on there? Uh fuck, I think it's a sour diesel actually. Really? Yeah, I love sour diesel. <coughs> oh shit. Let me see what else. If anybody has a question in the chat room for our professional poker player, Omaha Hydro, hmm. uh, go ahead and uh, put it in, in the chat and I'll ask him. Uh Vito's saying uh Bingus watch the movie Rounders and you'll learn all about holding <laughs> Vingus knows more about poker than Vito will realize, I think. <laughs> <laughs> have we ever played poker together before? Yeah, we have. Okay. How, how, am I a decent player? Yeah, you're pretty good. Not professional level, though, right? I would say no. Your emotions get the best of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Being honest. <laughs> no, man. You're absolutely right. I'm way too emotional. I got that post-traumatic stress crap going on. Yeah, I think a lot of your viewers know that. So yeah. Yeah, having PSD and playing poker doesn't go hand in hand. Fuck that. Yeah. yeah. I remember one time, shit, being old Bingus is at the table, and uh, there was a little drinking involved, and uh, a player said something disrespectful, and Bingus fucking went after his throat. And I was like, hey, Bing, chill out, man. Smoke some weed. <laughs> well, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. That's why I don't drink much anymore, especially playing poker. Yeah, I honestly, I try not to too. It's fuck. Uh, yeah. That's another good thing about weed is it. Is I used to go to alcohol when I'd take a nasty beat for like say fucking huge pot, three thousand, four thousand dollar pot. <laughs> And I go, fuck it. Give me a double shot of Patron. Now I'm saying, fuck it. I'm going to smoke a blunt or take a hit, whatever, you know. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Way bet, way healthier. Then you're, it calms you down. Drinking, then you're just getting, you're just blasting. You're getting way more aggressive. And it has an end of what sometimes, you know, it, <laughs> it's you're, you're going to win a lot or lose a lot if you're drunk playing poker. That's how, that's how it is. Now, uh, did you did you have you read some books on poker? Can you recommend any books that uh, might be good for our viewers? Oh yeah, Super Systems by Dole Brunson is like the Bible of poker. That's like tells you everything. But most poker players have read that, and I haven't been to the World Series in four years. So the last time I went was what 2013. the le The level of competition has gone so high; it is ridiculous like how good players are now it's just it's so it's so much harder to do this you know, so back in doyle brunson's days it was probably a lot easier oh yeah even in, in 2010 it was just like people were literally get, giving you money 
you know. But, and that's why you've changed to Omaha High Low. Exactly. Exactly. You go to different games, and uh, it's actually Big O is five card Omaha. Omaha High Low is four cards. You get four cards. And then the best low hand gets half the pot. The best high hand gets half the pot. But then there's a variation of that called Big O five cards, and it's even it's even crazier. So that's that's what we play out here is Big O. It's great. A lot of action. Nice. Well, you know, uh, Omaha, I really appreciate you showing up. Yeah. I'll give you the a, a, a spotlight, the cannabis spotlight. Uh, we'll get together again and play some more poker. And uh, you kind of wiped me out the last time, so I got to save my money. <laughs> All right, Bingus. It was, it was a pleasure. All right, buddy. Thanks so much for being here. No problem. Well, that's all I got for you now, Cannabis Warriors. Hang on, let me get my... There we go. That's all I got for you now, Cannabis Warriors. This is Bingus, signing out.